Today, we're checking out the top 10 most iconic keyboard riffs of the 80s. Now, whether you grew up in the 80s or maybe you just love a good throwback, I guarantee you're going to recognize some of these parts. So before we get started, leave a comment below this video and let me know what your favorite 80s keyboard riff is. Then let's dive in. At number 10, we have the 1984 theme song from the movie Beverly Hills Cop, which is the song Axel F by Harold Faltermeyer. The main synth that Faltermeyer used for this iconic synth line was the Roland Jupiter 8. But here I will be using the Jupiter X, which is a newer version of the legendary Jupiter 8. Here's what the full part sounds like. Next up, we have Motley Crue's Home Sweet Home from their 1985 album, Theater of Pain. The piano part was originally recorded by drummer Tommy Lee, and the song has remained a staple in the Motley Crue live shows since its release. For this one, I'll be using the Yamaha CP70, which you can see Tommy Lee playing in the music video. Here's the full intro from Home Sweet Home. Coming in at number eight, we have Runaway by Bon Jovi. This classic keyboard part was recorded by session musician Roy Bitten, who was soon replaced by David Bryan. Here's the keyboard part that starts off the track. So here we're looking at Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This by Eurythmics, which was a duo made up of Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart. They were a couple for a time, and this was written just after they had a big fight. This song was the title track on their album of the same name, and it became their breakthrough hit in 1983. Notice that the melody here is always moving higher up the piano as the top note keeps reaching higher and higher before resolving back down to where that riff first starts. This is a brilliant way to catch the ears of anyone listening and to get that melody stuck in your head for days. Coming in at number six is one of the most famous ballads of the 80s. This is the song Right Here Waiting by Richard Marks featuring CJ Vanston on keyboards. This song was written for his wife, who he was missing during his tour, and as Richard Marks puts it, the song took him only 20 minutes to write, which was quicker than any song he had written up until then. So if you're a fan of 80s ballads, this is a part that you just have to know. Let's step into the world of hard rock and glam metal and look at the final countdown by Europe. This is the title track from their 1986 album of the same name and it ended up hitting number one in 26 countries, which is pretty crazy. The keyboard part was recorded by Mick McKelly, but this iconic keyboard riff was actually written by Joey Tempest, the lead singer five years before the song was ever recorded. The sound behind this legendary riff is from the Roland JX-8P and we're going to play through it right now.
Michael Jackson's Thriller is one of the best selling albums of all time. And the one track we just have to talk about is the title track called Thriller. This is a disco funk track with an absolutely killer left hand part that lines up with the bass perfectly. Thriller also features a mini moog played by Greg Fillingains, which includes a lot of syncopated 16th note rhythms. Alright, we've made it to our top three iconic parts, and these are absolutely legendary. I guarantee you're going to recognize this next one right away. From Van Halen's 1984 record, this was the band's most successful single, and it differed from their earlier guitar-driven tracks because the entire song was based on the synth line. The iconic synth part was recorded by guitarist Eddie Van Halen on an Oberheim OBXA synthesizer. Here I'm going to be playing the classic riff from Jump on the Roland Jupiter X, which I have linked to an Oberheim. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> At number two, we have Take On Me by AHA. Despite how famous this song became, two previous versions of Take On Me completely flopped before the third version that we all know and love became a hit. And coming in at number one, the most iconic piano riff of the 80s, Don't Stop Believin' by Journey. The title and composition of Don't Stop Believin' came from Jonathan Kane, the keyboardist for Journey. As a struggling musician in LA, he was actually thinking about quitting music entirely. But every time he would call home, his dad would tell him, don't stop believing or you're done. This became the inspiration for the song and in 1980, he was hired by Journey. Here's what the iconic intro sounds like from Don't Stop Believin'. Let's take a listen. There you have it. Those are the top 10 most iconic 80s keyboard riffs. So now I'd love to hear from you. Which of these keyboard riffs was your favorite? Or maybe there's another song that you think should have been on this list. And if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons along with the notification bell because there's some other incredible content here on the Piano Channel. I'm Sam, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.